Hello everyone. Welcome to Engineered Learnings. Engineered Learnings has been created as an effort to help and reach out to all the engineering students, aspirants and professionals out there with the basic understanding and the crux of the topics important for placements, vivas, semesters, competitive examinations and all types of interviews. So let's go to today's topic. Welcome everyone. Today we are going to discuss about a very important topic, a budding hot topic for placements, vivas, semesters and competitive examinations. NPSH of a pump and the cavitation problem associated with it. So oh, before we go into the details of NPSH and cavitation, a few questions that I would like to raise up to you as an audience is, first of all, have you ever wondered in your household or in your the flat or maybe you have seen that in a reservoir pump system this is my reservoir and this is my pump i'm showing it as a square block for now and this is my overhead tank from wherein the water is being sent to all the uh, rooms and bathrooms of the uh, household so this height in between the pump and the reservoir is always kept low that is the reservoir is kept closer to the pump if this is my height z0 and this is my height zi so this is zi minus z0. So zi minus z0 is always kept as low as possible. That is the reservoir is kept closer to the pump. Have you ever wondered why? Moreover, if this is my suction line and this is my discharge line, the number of bends, the number of fittings, uh, the number of valves in suction line is always less. That is the fittings, valves and bends lesser in the suction line. And also, another thing is suction line is made of a higher diameter than the discharge line. So suction line diameter is high. So these three things have to be answered in this section. That why is the reservoir closer to the pump? Why are there a less number of fittings, valves and bends in the suction line? And why is the suction line of a higher diameter than the discharge line? Now before we answer these few questions, we will have to understand a few things. If I am running in a hurdle rest or you go in a hurdle rest, there are multiple number of hurdles. So what happens? When you face the hurdles, your pace decreases, your energy decreases fighting against them. Similarly, for a fluid which is flowing against any force that is preventing it, it will lose its energy, it will lose its pressure, just like we lose our pace. Our pace is corresponding to the fluid's pressure energy. So fluid is going to lose its pressure energy whenever there is some uh, hindrance in its way. So we see that if my pressure at the top of the reservoir, just at the top of the reservoir is P0. If this is P0 at the top of the reservoir and as it goes in through the suction line to the pump, as it faces the bends, the fittings, the valves and as it rises against my gravitational pull, so what happens is it loses its energy in multiple stages against the valves, the fittings and rising against the gravitational energy. Finally, it reaches here at a pressure Pi, where Pi will always be less than P0. And why is it so? Because we know, we have already stated that passing through multiple hindrances, it loses its pressure energy. So this holds. Now, having said this, this pressure will decrease. And we also know that with a, with a decrease in pressure, with a decrease in pressure, the boiling point of a liquid also decreases and there is a tendency of a liquid to turn into vapor. As the pressure decreases, the vapor formation tendency of a liquid increases. And we want the pump to behave as a pump and we do not want the allowance of any vapor into the pump. We want the liquid to enter as a liquid and remain as a liquid as it flows through the pump and through the discharge line. So NPSH, as the name suggests, is net positive suction head. It is a quantity that is defined as such so that if we keep a high NPSH, we avoid the formation of vapors within the pump. So to numerically define NPSH, there is something associated with the suction line and something that is a net positive quantity, net positive suction head available. If we define that, we define it as NPSH available is nothing but Pi by rho g plus Vi square by 2g minus Pv by rho g. Now what are these terms? This is my 
static head. Pi is the pressure just before the entry to the pump. So if we consider the pressure energy just before the entry to the pump, the static head, the pressure head just before the entry to the pump, this is my Pi energy. And this is my dynamic head, where Vi is the velocity associated with the fluid just before the entry to the pump. So Vi squared by 2g corresponds to my dynamic head. In total, this corresponds to my stagnant head. That is my stagnant head altogether. And this PV, it corresponds to the vapor pressure at which this liquid will start forming vapor. To avoid the formation of vapors, this NPSH should be kept as high as possible. For that, we need to make this as high as possible. If this is high, this stagnant head is higher than this, much, much higher than this, then NPSH is very high and the tendency to form vapor decreases. That is, the pressure is uh, not as low as this or not comparable to this. So there is no tendency of formation of vapors going into the pump. It will remain as liquid. Now, if we express this as a function of P0, that is the pressure at the top of the reservoir, at the top of the reservoir, if my pressure is P0, and this is my suction line leading to Pi. This is my Vi, and this is my V0. V0 being 0, that is the top of the reservoir, velocity is 0, and P0 assumed to be atmospheric pressure if it is a free reservoir wherein the atmosphere dwells. And this is my Zi, that is the height of the pump. Height of the pump. And this is Z0, the height of the liquid level in the reservoir. So now if we go for NPSH available expression, in terms of P0, we can write, express Pi and Vi, that is my stagnant head here, in terms of P0 and V0 here, by engineering Bernoulli's theory. So Pi by rho g plus Vi squared by 2g plus Zi plus HF is equals to P0 by rho g plus V0 square by 2g plus Z0. So this HF corresponds to the loss that it incurs when it travels from here in terms of friction. That is my skin friction and front, front friction as it travels from reservoir top to the pump. The frictional loss that head that it suffers. It is the frictional head loss. So what happens is this is 0 because the top of the reservoir V0 is 0. Now you see if we express this which was also the term in the NPSH available and we take this on this side and this on this side we get an expression that Pi by rho g plus Vi square by 2g is equals to P0 by rho g minus Zi minus Z0 minus HF. So this is the term that we get. And now if we express, if we now write it and replace it in the NPSH available expression, NPSH available, Pi by rho g plus Vi square by 2g, if we replace that, we will get P0 by rho g minus zi minus z0 minus hf minus pv by rho g. So you see now we have expressed this complete expression in terms of the pressure just corresponding to the top of the reservoir. And we see the losses it suffers is against the gravitational pull and against the frictional losses that it suffers when it passes through the suction line. Now this has to be kept as low as possible for this to be as high as possible and we desire it to be as high as possible to prevent the formation of vapors and prevent the problem associated with cavitation. Now what is the problem associated with cavitation you may question. Now let us get a feel of that. Now let us get a feel of that. If we draw a centrifugal pump, these are my involutes of the centrifugal pump. So whenever the fluid enters here in the pump, Assume it to be a three-dimensional image. The fluid enters from here, is thrown straight away to the periphery with a very high velocity. As soon as it gains velocity, this zone becomes a high velocity zone and a low pressure zone. 
as soon as the velocity increases, the pressure is dropped. As soon as the pressure is dropped, we know that the boiling point temperature is also dropped. And the NPSH expression, as we all know, NPSH available is equal to P0 by rho g if we write it again, plus minus Zi minus Z0 minus HF minus PV by rho g. We see that if this quantity is very close to this quantity, it is going with the NPSHA, but a very low NPSHA that is not as high as the NPSHA that is required, it is very close to the vapor pressure. And as soon as it faces this low pressure zone and its boiling point is little bit of depressed, it reaches PV, it reaches the vapor pressure and vapor pockets start forming. If it enters with a low NPSHA initially, so what happens is, suddenly this much amount of liquid, the same mass of liquid will try to expand 64 times the volume and will try to occupy 64 times the volume being converted into vapor pockets. So this vapor pockets don't get space to expand, creating a shock, creating a, a vibration, creating a, a, a nuance in the, in the section. Up till now it was okay. Formation of vapor pockets, vapor locking, up till now fine. When it goes to the periphery, what happens when it goes to the periphery? When it goes to the periphery, it gets choked. Now what happens is the velocity head is decreased. That is, it was thrown with high velocity initially, which created a low pressure zone. As soon as it reaches here, the pump serves the purpose of making it stagnant, decreasing its velocity head and increasing its pressure head. As soon as the pressure head is recovered and is increased, the pump serving its purpose, that is, in the discharge line, the pressure should be high. That is the pump's purpose. The pump is trying to increase the pressure. What happens is this vapor pockets that was initially created in the low pressure zone tries to collapse and as it collapses, it creates a shock wave that tries to return back to the impeller eye and the impeller blades causing disturbance there. This is called cavitation and the problem associated with it. The formation of vapor pockets, the generalized term for it is vapor locking that occurs is basically cavitation. The problem associated with it. To prevent cavitation, we will have to decrease the losses associated with the pressure. And this pressure head will have to be as high as possible, the energy head here, so that it does not attain the vapor pressure and it does not form vapor easily. To assure that, we will need to decrease the frictional losses, the energy losses against gravity as low as possible. We will have to keep these losses as low as possible. The decrease in pressure shouldn't be much from the reservoir top to the pump. We will have to decrease those pressure losses as far and as much as possible. To do that, Zi minus Z0 should be kept as low as possible to increase the NPSH. To increase the NPSH, Zi minus Z0 has to be kept as low as possible. Thus, the reservoir has to be as close to the pump as possible. Now, you see, HF also has to be as low as possible. Now HF has two sections, that is the skin friction, as it passes through the spike, the skin provides some friction, that is like skin friction, and the pond friction that is due to my bends, valves and fittings. So HF as a form of skin friction can be written by FL by D, DP square by 2G as a head plus KC, DP square by 2G. KC is the coefficient of loss associated with the valves, the fittings in the line. Now you see the more number of bends, the more number of fittings, the more number of valves, the more will be this frictional loss. We need to decrease it. So we need to keep this as low as possible to decrease this. So to keep this as low as possible, the minimum number of fittings, the minimum number of valves, the minimum number of bends should be kept. And to decrease the uh, form friction, uh, skin friction that we get, this is a fixed quantity, this is a fixed quantity, this is a fixed quantity, the friction factor. L has already been reduced to a great extent by keeping this pump as close to the reservoir as possible. So L has been taken care of. The only thing that we can do to decrease it further is to increase the D. If we increase the diameter of the suction line, automatically the frictional loss associated with it will decrease. And that is our motive. So we keep the Zi minus Z0 as low as possible and HF as low as possible by maintaining the three conditions that we have already stated and the reason behind it. 
to avoid the formation of vapor cortex, to avoid the form, uh, formation of shock waves generated at the periphery, and to avoid the problems associated with cavitation. So we have to reduce the loss that the liquid suffers before it reaches the pump in the suction line so that it does not lose its energy too much to hence become a vapor as it enters the pump. We want to keep the energy, the pressure energy as high as possible by reducing the pressure losses against gravity and the pressure losses against friction. Thus, to conclude, the reservoir should be as close to the pump uh, as possible. The Frictional losses should be kept as low by keeping the minimum number of fittings, valves and bends and lastly the suction line should be of a higher diameter than the discharge line. With higher discharge line, higher discharge uh, pressure would be required, higher length of discharge line, higher pressure head would be required, but suction line this NPSH and cavitation problems are associated with. So having said that, if you like the walk, like it, share it, comment and Send it to your friends, subscribe to our channel. That's it for today. Thank you very much.